The number of homeless people on the streets and in shelters across the U.S. increased significantly this year. That's according to a review by the Wall Street Journal, which says ending assistance programs put in place during the pandemic is contributing to the rise. Shannon Najmadabadi is with us now. She is a Wall Street Journal reporter, and she worked on this story. Uh, Shannon, thanks for joining us. Um, talk to us about uh, what you discovered in your reporting for the Wall Street Journal Review. Thanks for having me. My colleague John Camp and I found that the number of homeless people counted on streets and in shelters this year um, across numerous cities and regions is broadly higher than it was in past years. And if the trend we observes, observed holds true, the U.S. could see a sharp decline climb in homelessness this year than in recent years when there were smaller reported increases. The way we reported this story is that we reached out to numerous groups called Continuums of Care. There are hundreds of these nationwide, and they basically go out in January and count the number of people in their region's shelters or um, who are unhoused, you know, living on the street, and report that number to the federal government, which reviews it, and then publishes an annual report uh, around December, about a year after the count is complete. And so we were able to receive 150, now more than 150 of these reports from Continuums of Care about what they're seeing in their region. And we found that across the vast majority of them, they saw an increase on, on past years. Um, it is two caveats. It's important to note that this data is preliminary, of course. It also is imperfect. It's very difficult to count the number of people that are unsheltered, you know, living in cars, couch surfing in the woods or on property that's difficult to access. That said, it is the best count we have, and it is the underlying data the Fed uses for its own report. Um, you know, there's a lot of focus often in the news with sort of West Coast cities of San Francisco when we talk about homelessness, which is why I think this reporting is really important, because what we're seeing is that it's not just, you know, a handful of cities, it's across the board. That being said, you still don't have data for new data rather for New York City or Los Angeles. Once those numbers are thrown in, I mean, what could this look like? You're right, New York City and Los Angeles will have a significant impact on what the U.S. sees overall. Just for context, in last year's count, more than one in five um, of every person counted, of every homeless person counted, came from one of those two regions, New York City or Los Angeles. And by comparison, we got data from about 150 continuums of care, and they constituted 43% combined of, of people um, counted last year. So 150 with 43% versus two with 22%. So they could have a, a market impact on what we see um, nationwide when they finally do release those numbers. So what did you discover um, is, from your understanding, uh, the main cause as to why we've seen this sharp rise in people without homes? One of the main things that people that work with folks that are homeless or teetering on the edge of becoming homeless said is that they are hearing quite a lot from people about um, the effects of pandemic era protections running out combined with a very uh, tight housing market. So these are things like the eviction moratorium ending, emergency rental relief going away, um, extra funding that you know cities and regions got during the pandemic running out. And they're seeing it, they're really seeing that in the populations they're working with where someone maybe had a voucher and it ran out and now they're being priced out of the market and are maybe they were pretty close um, before and are now falling into homelessness. That said, there are a number of reasons why someone could become homeless. Some of the other things that really affected counts this year that we heard from folks are that maybe they changed their methodology. They were able to go to new places and conduct counts. For example, San Diego saw a, a pretty large increase uh, this year compared to past years. And they said that at least part of that was due to the fact that they could go onto state transportation property, like um, the land under overpasses and so on, to conduct the count, which they hadn't done before. And on the flip side, some regions said they saw more or less people in shelters because they either added shelters during the pandemic and then lost those beds or just added them and were able to keep them. So they were able to do a more thorough count than in years past. So, um, in some places, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I thought you were done. Some places also were affected by an influx of migrants who were counted in the general shelter population, even though they are um, traditionally what you would think of as part of that population. Uh, Shannon, really great article. Thank you very much.